and then give you a little bit of background as to what I hope to accomplish here, what we hope to do, and, and basically give you an orientation. Okay, wrote a book. This is my third book in a series on money behavior. It's called Discover Your Money Temperament. Now, I've been working with money and people for years, and it's been my observation that most people do not get it right. Uh, came out of Colgate University, grew up in upstate New York, uh, where it's cold, particularly this time of year. But I really didn't have much of an orientation to money growing up. I was pretty much a blue class, uh, a working class family. First, uh, uh, first person in my family to graduate from college, uh, attended Colgate University, was introduced to money and finance there, primarily through economics. And uh, upon graduation, took a commission in the Marine Corps. And to be very candid, I just wanted to get out of the snow. And I didn't realize until the Marine Corps had the foresight to send me to Hawaii that there was sunshine and a need for sunglasses and sunscreen. But as a young lieutenant, I was introduced to the problems of people with money. One of my responsibilities as a leader was to help my Marines make money better, make better money choices. And what I found is, well, poor money choices were causing behavioral problems, disciplinary problems, retention problems, substance abuse, domestic violence, et cetera, et cetera. And it was at that time I really started getting into trying to figure out how I can help my Marines make better, better money choices, but also myself. During that time, I picked up my first master's degree, uh, master's from Pe Pepperdine University. And uh, my payback for that for the Marine Corps was teaching economics at the Naval Academy. While at the Naval Academy, I taught traditional economics, and traditional economics assumes that people are rational with their money. Well, I found at the Academy, working with some of the smartest young people in the United States, that they were brilliant in the classroom, but making incredibly stupid money choices. And we got involved in a couple of projects while I was there to get the information out to the fleet and, and, and to our young uh, uh, graduates that they had to be responsible with money. Because to be very candid, they were accumulating debt, making poor choices, some were losing their commissions, and it was an ugly situation. So that was my first real uh, academic environment where we talked about traditional economics and it became obvious to me that it just really wasn't working the way it was supposed to. Did a number of Marine Corps things, ended up as a, uh, an assistant to the Marine Corps budget office, and from there I had the opportunity to build the Marine Corps uh, financial management school. Uh, did the grunt work for it, uh, became its first commander. And then during that time, I picked up another master's degree from, uh, from Boise State University in Instructional Performance Technology. And that's just a, a nice way of, of saying that, that I've got a strong background in human performance. Well, did uh, a number of uh, Marine Corps things, did Desert Storm, uh, uh, did a few other interesting things around the, uh, around the world and ended up back at the uh, Pentagon where I was an aide to the Secretary of the Navy for financial management. And in that capacity, I worked with both the House and the Senate and, and we worked uh, the Navy budget, the Marine Corps budget, uh, worked with committee members, worked with principals, both in the House and the Senate and their staff. And it was there I, I really discovered that it takes smart people in politics to make really crazy decisions with money. But it became obvious to me at that time that there had to be a better solution. When I retired as a Lieutenant Colonel, I went into private practice uh, as a financial advisor. And at that point, I was trained as a traditional advisor, pretty much a product focused approach. At that point, we assumed that most people are rational with their money, that all I had to do is give you enough information and enough product and whatever, you'd make good choices. But at that time, it became obvious to me that that just simply wasn't working. I also became very, very frustrated with the financial industry in general, that it was more about product than it was about people. And as an independent financial advisor, I felt my job was to represent you as a client and help you take better money decisions and build a strategy around what was important to you, not sell a product. Well, 2008 came around, which was an emotional behavioral meltdown. Kind of like what we're seeing right now, but it was a lot of really smart people making really dumb decisions with money. And, and that was at the regulation level, the professional level, that means the industry and consumers just got ahead of themselves. And, and we didn't really think that behavior was something we should address, but we all kind of knew that we should be doing that. And well, the
make a lot and that was a book I used with my clients to get them prepared for the behavioral aspect of managing the money and making good decisions. Well, fast forward, sold my practices, uh, wrote a book with Jay Alexander Martin, uh, one of the founders of the FUBU Corporation. And the title of that book is Money Makes Me Crazy, How I Squandered Millions Building the FUBU Empire. Jay is one of the most successful entrepreneurs in the United States, one of the top 100 uh, minority or black businessmen in the country. And Jay called me up after reading my first book and said, Ted, we need to get together. We need to talk because I'm just not getting this money thing right. And as a result, we talked for a while. And over the course of a year, we became good friends. But we also decided that it was important to tell Jay's story. And that became uh, this book, Money Makes Me Crazy, the How I Squandered. And then uh, a couple of years ago, uh, my publisher talked to me and said it was time to get the word out about money temperament again the behavioral piece. So what we did is we sat down and took a look at my first book, reworked it a little bit, and that evolved into what we have today, which is the basis for this group and what we're going to be talking about, Discover Your Money Temperament, a common sense guide to financial security. You see, what I have learned is that, number one, humans are not very good with money. I know you may find that hard to believe, but I bet you've got examples. I do. Matter of fact, my wife keeps a logbook of the things I've done that are crazy with money. And I'm a professional, fully licensed, trained, academic background, been doing this for years, and I screw it up all the time. But more importantly, so do the pros, the financial managers, the people that invent the products and sell the products and, and manage your money. They're human also. But I believe it's a fallacy, it's a misconception that humans are naturally hardwired to work with money. So that's one of the things we're going to talk about here. We're going to examine some of the things we do with money that we don't think about because to be very kind of candid, probably 95 to 99 percent of all our spending decisions are emotional, non-conscious, and automatic. Now this isn't a big deal when you're going in to buy a soda when you stop for gas, but it becomes a real issue when you do a $10,000 upsell on the new car you bought or you, you're watching HGTV and decide to, to redo your entire kitchen because somebody on the West Coast decides that you need to have something. So bottom line is humans are not hardwired to work well with money. We're going to examine that here. And then, then we're going to talk about what are the approaches. And it's going to be based on the book. The book itself is broken into two parts. Part one talks about people and money. It talks about our biology. It talks about our belief set and it talks about our culture. Our biology, I just talked about. We're, our what brains are wired to stay alive and pass on the genes. It is not wired to manage money, to be successful in today's society and economy, to do the the to do taxes, to read the small print on our credit cards. We're being bombarded on a daily basis to spend, 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 and our brains really get into overload. But the default option is put it on autopilot. We are spenders in most cases and emotional. So we're going to talk a little bit about the biology. What makes us tick? Why do we do what we do with money from a basic natural point of view? Then we're going to talk about belief sets with money. Um, our research, my research indicates that, that most people have developed their basic understanding of money by mid adolescence. Now think about this for a second. This is kind of scary. This means that you pretty much believe about money the same way you did in middle school. Now, for some of you, that's a mullet and a starter jacket and worrying about buying your first pair of Jordans. Some of us are a little bit older, it goes back farther than that, but the bottom line is your upbringing up through mid-adolescence has a significant impact on your belief set with regard to money. And, and those beliefs carry forward. Doesn't mean you can't change these beliefs, but it's difficult. And then the last part is culture. Culture has an incredible impact on your, your, your spending pattern, your, your concept of money, what money is for, what's it, what we, what, your relationship with it. And, and different cultures have different impacts and it does tend to influence greatly your attitudes with money, how you spend money, and where you are today. And then the final part we're gonna talk a little bit about is my solution, which I call the money behavior system. The money behavior system is what I've developed and used with clients for the last number of years that is very, very different. 
than the standard mantra that you're getting from TV and whatever. Fundamentally, I believe what you know and what you think about money is fundamentally correct, but probably wrong for you based on how you are naturally wired with money. So to begin with, what are your money values? What's important about money to you? In the, in the, in, throughout your life, what do you want to accomplish? What does money do? What are your big values? We're going to examine that because unless you understand what's important about money to you, pretty much the discussion about money management and making better, better spending choices is irrelevant. Once you understand your money values, then we need to examine your money temperament. Money temperament is probably the most important element and it's how you naturally think and feel about money and as a function again of your biology, your human, your upbringing, your money belief set, and finally your culture. These conspire on a daily basis to help you take incredibly dubious money decisions. So when we're talking about money temperament, that's something you've got to get your head around. Then finally, we need to talk about, I call it money knowledge. Money knowledge is not the technical knowledge about money. It's, it's really how you process information. Call it your learning style, learning modality, whatever. But how do you process information and take information? Because the way you process information will, go, will definitely impact how you take decisions. So here's the three things that I, we're going to talk about at length here and I write about in the book that are critically important. Number one, what's important about money to you? What are your money values? Number two, money temperament. How do you naturally think and feel about money? Number three, how do you process information? And I'll tell you right now, nobody out there is talking about this. And if you're working with a financial professional, I pretty much guarantee they don't work with you in this manner. And I think we need to fix this. Okay, the next piece is, once you understand what makes you tick with money, what is your money strategy? Your money strategy is your 300,000 foot look of where you're going with your money, how you're going to make it happen. But the key is it has to be tied to your temperament, how you process information and support your money values. Your strategy has to be aligned with you and who you are. And then finally, your money plan. Your money plan is execution. And at this point, you bring in the products and services and hold yourself accountable. So this group is dedicated to talking about you and money, how you're wired, your belief sets, your culture, and then finally, where you fit into the grand scheme of things with regard to the money-based system. What are your values? How do you determine those? Are they truly important to you? Are you headed in the right direction? What is your money temperament? How do you naturally think and feel about money? And here's something that's kind of cool. I don't care what it is, it doesn't matter, but you need to know what it is. We spend too much time trying to fix you as opposed to identifying who you naturally are with money and help you make better money decisions. Think about this for a second. If you have a coach and you're into fitness, a good coach is going to figure out who you are and design a program for you, not force you to work with a program that is not suited for you. We need to do the same thing with money. I call this a one-size-fits-you as opposed to a one-size-fits-all approach. So that's what we're going to talk about here. That's what we're going to do here. This is the first time I've ever done a Facebook Live. Uh, we're going to do a lot more of these. I'm going to work through it. But I want you to participate. I want to know what you're thinking and feeling about money. I want to know your concerns. I want to know what is making you tick with regard to money. What are your frustrations? And then also bring other professionals in from time to time to talk about helping you make and take better money decisions. So this is a lot longer than I thought it was gonna I wanna thank you for joining. This will be posted. I'm gonna do more of these. Please, please, please join the group. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you'd like to talk about. I wanna get in there with uh, you know the idea of the day. I want you to post your stories and your pictures. There's a lot of crazy money out there. But I want to make this fun. This is your group. I think this whole subject of money, we make it too tedious. We make it too technical. It's not. It's people being people and asking, acting human. Once you understand that and you're comfortable with who you are and how you relate with money, your feeling, thinking brain, as I call it, you're going to make better money decisions. You're going to be happier and you're going to move forward with a lot more confidence. 
So until uh, I'm back again, I, I want to thank uh, thank you those of you for joining the group. Please invite others to join. Uh, check out tedmcclyman.com. There's a lot of information on the book. At tedmcclyman.com, there's a free course that supports the book. And there's also a 